today's lesson is on effects of control. So it's important to, um, that we are aware that during our flight training, the horizon is our primary reference at all times. So your eye should be out on the horizon for about 98% of the time when you're flying. The gap between the nose of the aircraft, or the pillar is, and the horizon, we call that gap our attitude. Now our aircraft has been designed to be inherently stable. We call it positive stability. What does that mean is that when we take my hands off the controls, the aircraft wants to maintain level flight. It's very stable and it wants to return to this stable condition. So for effects control, we're going to look at the first, the primary effect of our elevator. So eyes at the front of the horizon. So when I move the control column rearward, the nose pitches up in relation to the horizon and the gap between the nose and the horizon gets smaller. Going to return now to level flight. And likewise, when I move the control column forward, the nose pitches down in relation to the horizon and the gap between the nose and the horizon gets bigger. Now returning to level flight. So we can see there that the primary effect of our elevator is pitch. When we move the control column rearward, nose pitches up in relation to the horizon. When we move the control column forward, the nose pitches down in relation to the horizon. OK, we're now going to look at the primary effect of our alirons. So once again, eyes at the front of the horizon. So when I move the control column to the right, the aircraft will roll to the right. And when I move the control column to the left, the aircraft will roll to the left. Back to wing level. So we can see the primary effect of our alirons is roll to the right or left. OK, we're now going to look at the primary effect of our rudder. So I'm just going to use the southern eastern tip of the island here as a reference point. So when I apply pressure on the right rudder pedal, once again, eyes at the front of the horizon, the nose will yaw to the right. Back to our balanced flight. And when I apply pressure on the left rudder pedal, the nose will yaw to the left, like such. So we can see there that the primary effect of rudder is yaw to the right or left. Now turn around the other way now. So we're now going to look at the secondary or further effects of our control. So once again, eyes out the front of the horizon. We're going to look at the, prime, uh, the further effect of our elevator. So when I'm in the control column rearward, nose pitches up in relation to the horizon. The gap between the nose and the horizon gets smaller. And look what's happening to our airspeed. Our airspeed is slowing down. Back to level flight. And likewise, when I move the control column forward, the nose pitches down in relation to the horizon. The gap between the nose and the horizon gets bigger. And look what's happening to our airspeed. That's right, we're speeding up. Back to level flight. So we can see the further effect there of our elevators when I move the control column rearward, nose pitches up, and we start to slow down. When I move the control column forward, the nose pitches down in relation to the horizon, and we start to speed up. Now we're now going to look at the secondary effect of our aileron. So once again, eyes at the front of the horizon. When I move the control column to the right, the aircraft will roll to the right. We're going to let go of the controls now. We can see ourselves now slipping down towards that lower wing. And we're actually yawing in that direction now as well, which I can correct very easy by rolling the wings level like such. And likewise, when I move the control column to the left, the aircraft rolls to the left. We'll let go of the controls now. We're now slipping down towards that lower wing and we're yawing to the left as well, which I can correct very easily by rolling the wings level there. So we can see the secondary effect of roll is that when we roll, we slip down towards the lower wing and then we yaw in that direction as well. Now take a look at the uh, secondary effect of our rudder. So once again, eyes at the front of the horizon. Can I have my hands off the controls? When I apply pressure on the right rudder, the nose will yaw, and then we skid through the air, and then we roll as well. So I can correct very easily. Likewise, when I apply pressure on the left rudder, 
We yaw, we skid, and then we roll in that direction as well. Bring it back to wings level. So our secondary effect of yaw is that when we yaw the aircraft, we skid through the air, and then we roll. Let's go turn the aircraft around. Okay, we're now going to look at the effect of the airspeed on the uh, aircraft. So we can see that in normal cruise, we're doing about 100 knots near. The controls feel quite firm and responsive. If I slide the aircraft down and bring us to a bit of a lower airspeed. Just my power setting and attitude. And instead of 100 knots now, we've got 70 knots. We can see at this speed, the controls are a lot more sloppy, uh, so they're a lot less responsive, both in roll, in pitch, and in rudder. Less responsive, because we've got less airflow flowing over those control surfaces. But likewise, at a higher airspeed, as we increase our airspeed, those control surfaces get more firm and more responsive. At a low airspeed, they get less firm and less responsive, or we call it sloppy. Now, some phases of the flight, some of the control surfaces may feel quite responsive and the others feel sloppy. And that, for instance, on takeoff, we've got full power, we've still got a fairly slow airspeed on takeoff. That propeller slipstream actually hits our elevator and rudder. So that can actually feel quite responsive, but because our ailerons are situated outside of our propeller slipstream, they can still feel sloppy during that phase of flight. Okay, we're now going to look at our, the effect that the propeller and power has on the aircraft. So I'm looking at the aircraft flying at le level now. Now take my hand off the controls, I want your eyes forward on the horizon. When I apply power now, I want you to notice what's happening to the nose of the aircraft. I try to slowly pitching up and we are in to the left. That will bring us back to level now. So as we can see there that when I increase our power, the nose wants to pitch up and you're to the left. That's in the sling aircraft. Now I want you to watch what happens when I bring the power back. We're now level, bringing the power off. What's happening with the nose of the aircraft? I try it's pitching down and we're yawing slowly to the right, which I'm going to correct now. So what we can see is that the power and propeller has an effect on the aircraft, so when I increase power, nose will want to pitch up and yaw left. When I decrease power, the nose will want to pitch down and yaw to the right. Okay, we're now going to look at the effect of trim on the aircraft. So a lot of people get worked up with the trim, but the trim is very straightforward. The trim is there to make the pilot's job easier to, so to relieve the control column pressure of the control column or the control stick. So on this sling aircraft we have an electric trim. The button on the front of the control is trim down and the button on the back of the control stick is trim up. So right now the aircraft is trimmed for level flight. Take my hands off, the aircraft wants to fly level. However, if I put my finger on the down trim, the front of the control stick, the nose wants to pitch down. I don't want that to happen. I'm going to keep it level, but I can feel that control stick wanting to move forward. I can feel the, the aircraft wanting to pitch down because I've trim the aircraft down. So all I need to do to get rid of that control stick pressure and the nose wanting to pitch down, so that doesn't happen, is to use the opposite trim. So if the nose wants to pitch down, or the control stick or control column wants to move forward, we just need to use up trim to get rid of that pressure. And we just keep tapping the uh, trim until we don't feel any pressure. Look at that. The aircraft wants to maintain level flight. And likewise, right now the aircraft's level. If I use, if I put my finger on up trim and don't hold the control, stick or control column, the nose wants to pitch up. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to keep it level. But I can feel that control stick wanting to move rearward, and I can feel the nose wanting to pitch up because I've trimmed the aircraft up. So as a rule, 
To get rid of that pressure on a control stick or control collar, all we have to use is the opposite trim. So the nose wants to pitch up, or the control collar wants to move rearward, or control stick wants to move rearward, we need to use down trim to get rid of that pressure. And there we go. We have no more pressure on the stick, and the aircraft's trimmed for level flight. And there we go, it makes the pilot's job a lot easier to fly the aircraft.